freedom itself was attacked this morning. We had that big explosion from much, much lower. I don't know what on earth caused that. We know that they would, if they could, go further. If you launch a devastating attack upon a Muslim country, killing thousands, you will make 10,000 bin Ladens. The Prime Minister had another 20-minute talk with President Bush today. giving the Prime Minister my party's full support for his immediate pledge to stand shoulder to shoulder. Here the Queen expressed her total shock. The official mourning for all the victims goes on. We have a big open world today and a big open society. And so we have to get, we're trying to figure out how to get the benefits of our openness and freedom and continue to learn how to defend ourselves against organized mad. Make no mistake, there are certain countries in the world, North Korea, Iraq, Iran, maybe Gaddafi, maybe one or more else that are ready to sweat the world order by using whatever they have and without a missile defense can at least cover 1500 miles about the okay. distance from Tehran to central uh, Western Europe you won't be able to have a world order. Skin was all off. I helped him out. This is him all over. And people are jumping out the windows. I was just standing here watching the World Trade Center after the first after the first plane hit. I just saw a second plane come in from the south. I can't tell you anything more than that. I saw the plane hit the building. Uh, big boom. Come down the steps. Everything fine till we got to the basement and everything just fell in. Uh, I got trapped in there with another guy. Crawled out. Kept getting hit in the head. <laughs> Bags all around, finally we clawed our way out over the rubble. Yeah. Come on, Dan. All right, where'd be Thomas? Mr. Blair aborted a major set-piece speech on his policies at the TUC conference at Brighton, opting instead for a brief shock statement before rushing back to London. It's clear that these attacks mean more intrusive security in Britain and a closer interest in some of the dissident groups based here in London. But the bigger question tonight is just what Tony Blair means when he promises that the democracies will eradicate mass terrorism. The world's security system, Britain's place in that system, are already changing shape tonight. Joining me now from our studios in Washington is Professor Robert Lieber of Georgetown University. Professor Lieber, James Rubin there was talking about the obvious anger that many Americans will feel. Do you think that is going to be, the, the, in essence, the sense that most people will have tonight? Yes, I do, and I think there's something unique and very different about this terrorist uh, uh, wave of assaults. Uh, there have been other terrorist attacks in recent years that produce immediate anger, but then that fades. This is different. It's risky to speculate in the middle of events. Uh, one thing I think is not unreasonable to say, though, is that an action of this sort would have required a very extensive terrorist network and support, almost certainly by a state, not just a bunch of bearded guys with Kalashnikovs, uh, to hijack at least four planes at the same time, to have uh, terrorists, uh, pilots who could fly large passenger aircraft, uh, to coordinate actions in New York and Washington, to resolve on the timing, to keep it secret, uh, to uh, have concealed identities and whatnot. This is not the uh, small operation. There is bound to be, almost certainly, the hand of a country behind this, and I think sooner or later the details when it will emerge. The American people are going to respond to this, well, and they're going to be very, very, very angry, and they're going to try when they can identify who's responsible to make sure they pay a price. That's all from this special edition of the 10 o'clock news on Tuesday, the 11th of September, 2001.